In order to work with rationals, we have to be able to factor. So we're going to quickly brush up on our factoring skills. Remember that the first thing we're always going to check for is what's called a greatest common factor. You're going to take a look at, in this case, the binomial. So we've got two terms here. Is there a number and variable that can be divided evenly out of both of those terms? So begin with the numbers. Between 6 and negative 8, what's the largest number other than 1, which isn't super helpful, that will divide evenly into each of those? And we can see that both of them are divisible by 2. And then we have an m squared and an m. What's the largest variable that will divide evenly into both of those terms? And it is an m. So when we pull out a 2m, we're going to say, what are we left with? Now, if we begin with two terms, we have to have two terms in the bracket. So we're going to say, you can do this two ways, but we can say 2m times what gets us back to 6m squared. Well, we know 2 times 3 gives us 6, m times m gives us m squared. And then we're going to say 2m times what would give us the second term of negative 8. And because we already have an m here, we've got that term covered. Now we're going to check. So if we go 2m times negative 4, will we get that second term of negative 8m? Product is multiplication. So when we multiply those two together by distribution, do we get back what we originally had? If so, you factored it correctly. So just remember, factor means create bracket. What are the terms we're multiplying together to get back to that original term? In the next example, we're looking at 15 and negative 5. What's the largest number other than 1 that divides evenly into 15 and negative 5? And it is going to be a 5. And then look at the variables. We have an x cubed and an x. What's the largest variable that will divide evenly into each of those? And it is an x. So 5x is our greatest common factor. And remember, if we begin with two terms, we have to have two terms in the bracket. So now you can either go 15x cubed divided by 5x to get the first term, or we can say 5x times what will get us back to this. So 5 times 3 will get us back to 15. And we have 1x. We need two more x's to get to x cubed. And then we're going to say 5 x times what will give us negative 5x, and it is going to be a negative 1. All right, so let's try the next one. Is there a number other than 1 that divides evenly into 3 and negative 4? Well, no, there isn't, so we don't have a number, but look at the variables, n cubed and n squared. The largest variable that will divide evenly into both terms is n squared. So we pull out an n squared, and then we're going to say n squared times what, if we distribute this in, will get us back to 3n cubed. So we need a 3, and we need one more n. 2n's plus 1n is 3n's. And then we're going to say n squared times what gets us back to negative 4n squared. And it is going to be a negative 4. And finally, we have a 4 and a 16. What's the largest number that divides evenly into both? And then we have a y cubed and we have a y to the power of 4. The largest variable that divides into both is y cubed. Now you may notice that the greatest common factor, if you look at the variables, is always the one with the smallest exponent. Okay, so our greatest common factor is 4y cubed, and then we're going to distribute this in. So we're going to say 4y cubed times what gets us back to 4y cubed, and it's going to be a 1, so we have to put the 1 there. And then we're going to say 4y cubed times what gets us back to 16y to the power of 4. So we know 4 times 4 will give us 16, and remember, when you multiply powers with the same base, you're adding the exponents. So we've got 3y's plus another y, when we add those exponents together, will give us the last one. And then check, if we distribute this in, will we get back to the original binomial that we had? Always check for your greatest common factor first. Because we're mostly gonna be dealing with binomials this year, the other thing we can do is check to see if we have a difference of squares. If so, we're going to factor them as conjugates. So remember, these are your perfect squares. If we see those numbers with a difference or a subtraction sign between them, we're going to set up our conjugates. So in the first one here, we can see we are subtracting the two terms. 9 is a perfect square, 1, which we don't have written down, is a perfect square, and x squared is a perfect square. So we've got Two perfect squares, subtraction sign in the middle. So we're going to begin by setting up our conjugates. One is a plus, one is a minus. Square root the first term, square root the second term, and then we can even check this. When we foil this back, x times x is x squared, 
negative 3x plus 3x is 0. That's why we don't see an x term in there. And then multiply the last terms. 3 times negative 3 gives us that negative 9. Second one, do we have a greatest common factor? No, we are subtracting perfect square, perfect square. We're going to recognize this is a difference of squares, and we're going to set up the conjugates. One is a plus, one is a minus. Square root the first term, square root the second term, and then check if you FOIL this back, will we end up with what we started with? 5a times 5a is 25a squared. We have negative 40ab plus 40ab is 0ab, so that's why we don't have a middle term. 8b times negative 8b is negative 64b squared. Now, here's the most common mistake. People forget 1 is a perfect square, so you've got to recognize that. There is no greatest common factor, so we can go right into setting up our conjugates. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of negative 4n squared, or just 4n squared, is 2n. And again, quickly FOIL it back. Make sure that you get what we started with. Now, in the last example, we do have a greatest common factor. We have 3 and a negative 48. So we know that 3 and then y is going to be what we can pull out of those. And then we are left with y squared minus 16. Now, you have to make sure that you are fully factored. So in here, we recognize we are subtracting two perfect squares. That means we're not done. We have to keep factoring. So we keep the greatest common factor here, set up the conjugates. One is a plus, one is a minus, square root the first term, and then square root the second term. And then when you go to check this, remember, we're going to FOIL this first, then we're going to distribute in the 3y, and we should get back to what we originally started with.